Welcome back to our webcast series on perspective projection. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the principles and properties underpinning um, an auxiliary vanishing point. So, um, just to start off with, I suppose we might explain just what an auxiliary vanishing point is. An auxiliary vanishing point is a vanishing point for any line that is sloped. In all the examples we've been doing previously, all the lines we've been dealing with have all been level lines. They may have different directions and be going off in different directions, but all the lines were level. And from our previous exercises, we would have seen if the line is level, the vanishing point appears on the horizon line. So if we're dealing with a sloped line, our vanishing point is different insofar as that our auxiliary vanishing point, what we call it, will appear either above or below the horizon line. So we need a method or an approach to find out how far above or below or what position our auxiliary vanishing point should be. So it specifically relates to sloped lines. And this is our auxiliary vanishing point. Um, so to begin with we'll just have a look at the setup as what we have here at the moment and then we'll go through how we go about locating our auxiliary vanishing points. So the question we have at the moment is a typical question. Here we have our spectator. We have the plan view of our object, which you can see is a box with a sloped top on it. So from our question, all we can see is a rectangle and we can just note that the sloped edge and our level edge here both appear one on top of the other. So from our plan view, we can't differentiate the level edge or the sloped edge. Um, likewise, we also have our picture plane, we have our ground line and a horizon line set up. And just for convenience sake, I have the front edge, the front surface of the box drawn in, just so it's one less thing that we have to worry about drawing. So just so we can concentrate specifically on the auxiliary vanishing point and how to locate that. Uh, you can also see unusual to the questions we've been doing so far, we have an end view of the object. So we don't necessarily need that, but just to add a bit of clarity to the explanation, I've just included this here. Uh, we can also see up here at the top, we have the uh, end view or the side view of our object. This would be your typical um, information that you might be given in the, the question. So we can see we have our box and there we can see the, the slope of the, the top surface here like so. Um, so that's the setup of the question. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can go about finding our auxiliary vanishing point. Now, before we begin that, I suppose the one key thing to understand is that if we're dealing with a line, whether it's um, a level line or a sloping line, all lines contain two components. One component is direction and one component is slope. So if you take a level line, a level line has direction, like what we've seen in our previous examples, um, but its slope is said to be zero. So some people could say that it has no slope, or you could call say that it has a slope of zero. Um, if we have our line like so, our sloping line, well that contains our two components. That contains direction and it contains an angle. So level lines are direction only and have zero slope, and sloped lines contain direction and our angle. So it has the two components. Um, so in order to find our auxiliary vanishing point, what we first of all must do is we must first of all work out the vanishing point for a line moving in the same direction, but of zero slope. So if we take our example here, here we have our sloped line moving in this direction at this angle, and here underneath it we have a line moving in direction only. So it's a level line, so it has no slope, just direction. And in our plan view, like we had seen before, there's our slope line on the top surface there, and directly below that is our level line. So both the level line and the slope line contain the same direction. So we're going to first of all work out the vanishing point for the level line, direction only. So the way we do that is from our spectator, we draw a parallel line, so parallel to our direction, that hits the picture plane, and we can just see that in our end view there, so there's our level line there, there's our parallel line from our spectator giving us our vanishing point, and you can see it over here in our 3D view. And from our 3D view we can see because it's a level line, it appear our vanishing point is located on the horizon line. So in my perspective view I'm going to bring that up 
and I'm going to draw in my vanishing point on the horizon line. So this vanishing point is for lines moving in this direction that are level, that have no slope. So that's our vanishing point for our level line. If we want to locate a vanishing point or our auxiliary vanishing point for our line of the same direction with a slope this time, what we do is we do the same approach. We look parallel to the slope line. So if there's a slope line like so, we look parallel to it from our end view and we can see there's our auxiliary vanishing point. Same thing applies here in our 3D view. So our auxiliary vanishing point you'll see is directly above our level vanishing point. So this here has, they both have the same direction. So because they have the both the same direction, the auxiliary vanishing point will be directly above it. And as you can see in our object, this object here is sloping upwards. So our auxiliary vanishing point is above our horizon line. If this was sloping back the way or sloping downhill, our vanishing point would actually be below the, va the horizon line because our spectator would be looking down below the horizon line. So really the question of how to find our auxiliary vanishing point, it all boils down to how high is our auxiliary vanishing point or how much lower than our auxiliary vanishing point than our vanishing point is our AVP here. So from our question as we have it, we could actually measure that distance there. So where our auxiliary vanishing point crosses the picture plane, we could measure that distance and mark it straight away onto our horizon line, giving us the auxiliary vanishing point. Um, so that would actually locate as our auxiliary vanishing point for our slope line. The only thing about this approach is that you have to draw in an end view. So a lot of the time that it's a needless effort. You don't actually need to go do that. It's a lot of extra work um, to locate that one simple piece of information. So the method that we use is based upon the idea of instead of drawing it like what we have here, where you can see our there's our sloped line directly above our level line, and in our plan view, the two appear one on top of the other. So this could be our level line, or similarly, this could be our slope line directly on top of it. We can't tell an awful lot from our plan view. In that case, we would have to draw in our end view to locate the slope of it. So what we do instead is we take this triangle that's formed here, and using this level line here as a hinge, what we do is we knock that down. So we rebat that or hinge that down so that when we look from above in our plan view, the angle that we have here and the height that we have here is just knocked down flat. So it is the exact same triangle. The height here is exactly the same, only that it's hinged over, tipped over onto its side. So in our plan view, we can see there's our slope line coming from our spectator going off up into the air. And what we're doing is we're just hinging that down flat. So there would be our height that we would be marking above our vanishing point. So it's just a quicker way than rather than going drawing this entire view here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to eliminate any of this extra material. So we don't need the end view here. So we're just going to start the question the way you'll start the question without any of this extra information. So we're just going to disappear that and we're going to take it from the very start. So how do we locate this triangle here? Well, the slope of this triangle here is exactly the same as the slope of the triangle that we're given in our question. So you can do it one of two ways. You can either, from your question, you can take the distance, the level distance here, and the vertical distance here. So if we can step out this distance and up this distance here, well, that will set the angle of our slope line. So from our question here, you can see that the triangle we have here is stepped off of our level line, so in our plan view there's our level line like so, so we take our x distance here, we step it along our direction line, our level line like so, and we step our y distance perpendicular out from that, and we then join the two together and there is our slope for our object. You could do it a second way where if you had your object drawn here, you could go and with your protractor measure the angle and simply just mark off the angle off of your direction line. So that will get you exactly the same thing. But once you have that slope drawn in, essentially that is the slope for this line here located. We just continue it on until it hits the picture plane. So there's our triangle drawn in in our plan view. And now we're able to measure our height here and we're able to step it up off of our vanishing point. So that is our distance that we've now measured here 
and we're just stepping it straight up from our vanishing point. Um, and once we have that, well, we have our vanishing point, and we just use our auxiliary vanishing point in exactly the same way that we use our vanishing point that we have in our previous exercises. In this exercise, we can see that we have the front face already drawn in for us. If we want to draw our lines going back in this direction, sloping upwards, well, instead of going to our vanishing point, which would be just direction only, we bring them straight up to our auxiliary vanishing point, which has our direction and our slope accounted for. So there's our heights accounted for. We take our back corner of our object and from our spectator, run it through and project it onto our picture plane, bring it up into our perspective view, and there's the back line like so. So there is the slope surface of our object drawn in there. So you can see our sloping surface here continues off up to our auxiliary vanishing point. Uh, we can see exactly the same thing happening over here in our 3D view. Here's our front face drawn in onto our picture plane. We continue them up or project them up to our auxiliary vanishing point and we can draw in our front face like that. So that's our auxiliary vanishing point. Um, auxiliary vanishing point, it tends to be an area where our students um, get a little bit confused. So it's worthwhile maybe looking back over it and um, doing some of the exercises or kind of following through some of the following videos which uh, will kind of further kind of give examples of our auxiliary vanishing point. So hopefully um, this has been of some use to you and say keep watching the videos and hopefully it'll all become very clear. Thank you very much.